All right, we're back and we're watching the Street Fighter. Um, more of the Street Fighter. Uh, the Return of the Street Fighter. Uh, which is the second movie in this trilogy. Uh, I have not seen the third movie just yet. Um, I look forward to finishing the trilogy soon. These movies are a little bit better shit. I think this one's a little less brutal than the first one. Uh, it's no, no, nowhere near as... I mean, it's still bad shit. But it's just like not not as brutal, uh, which is uh, which is a, a better, I'd say, generally better. I think most people would prefer the less less brutal version. Um, no, I mean, as this one's this one, it's not as brutal, but I think the first one's better. I think it makes. It's, it's it's a clearer plot line. I this one I definitely got a little bit lost in, um, and it wasn't because I was already a bit too deep into my cider. No, don't be that. Uh, not at all. I know what you're talking about. No. So, uh, we basically start off. So we don't start off with. A kind of continuation of the previous film which is odd like I kind of expected this to almost pick up immediately after the end of the last film because it felt like it but that's how it just set up but no we do get a little bit of continuation but it feels like it almost ignores the first film like the woman he saved throughout most of the first film just just isn't in this one. He's like, oh, that's well, that's a bit weird. Just, you know, yeah, a bit strange, isn't it? Uh, we basically have our, our main character Takuma. Uh, he's got a, uh, it's like he's getting attacked by the police. I, I oh, know, yeah, he's, he's trying to steal something from evidence. Uh, so he just goes after he go he goes after the police. Um, just fucking outright after them, like breaks in, just fights them all. And uh, oh yeah, because he's gonna kill a guy. Sorry, it is. It's, I've, I honestly, I've. There's not like the first one. I could just re re, -re remember like reread uh, like plot synopsis where this one's a little harder to because apparently that just doesn't exist. Um. Generally, I, I have fun and read this one. Yeah, but he basically just goes and kills a guy. Uh, I thought he was, was going to steal some evidence, but no, so that's the next guy. Um, who, yeah, has this golden statue that the dojo want back? Um, so yeah, they end up breaking the police department. Because apparently they're just fine, fine with that police. Which always seems odd, especially since this guy has already killed someone before. It's just it's fine. But, uh, yeah. He already killed someone before, so he basically need to get the golden statue. And then we kind of just get a rundown of, like, all the bad guys. Like, they've got, like, a whole... Everyone's got their own coloured gi. Um, we do have a new comic relief in this film. I forget what the, her name is. Uh, have I got it here? Uh, Hin... Hinboki? I mean, that makes sense. I was looking at the English translation where they're just like, yeah, I mean, it, in parentheses, it's, they're just called Kitty, which, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Um, I don't. I don't understand them. I don't know what it is like. I. It's so strange where it's like these films were filmed so close together, and yet they just don't really feel as if they are as c that connected. 
Um, but we see a lot of stuff with like the dojos. Um, and this was one one police cop who's resigned, and we get a kind of a flashback of the, the fight between the dojo leader uh, and uh, Takuma in this one. It is a long ass flashback. So watching these films back to back, you're like, "Ooh, are they just trying to save some money here?" Because this goes on for like a good five minutes or so. It's just like, are we trying to save money? Because there's another flashback later on, which also takes up quite a bit, which basically recaps the end of the last film. I feel like they were trying to save some money, but also. These films literally, like, the first film, when that came, sorry, I'm just going to look it up for the first film again. The first film, I think, came out in February? So in Japan, it came out, well, at least here it says, the 2nd of February, 1974. Um, and the second film came out on the 27th of April, 1974. So it's literally been, like, two months. We watched the cinema, then fucking two months. It's just, it's just one of those things where I'm like, that just seems like, seems like unnecessary padding. Like, a li and I've seen it in a few films, uh, they've done it, and I was like, well that seems unnecessary, but then I look at it and go, okay, well it's been a year or two, you know, kind of makes sense, not, yeah, it's not like nowadays where you could just like, oh, I'm going to go watch this movie in the cinema, or oh, I just binge the last two films, um, Ahead of time. Yeah, this is... Nope. You've watched the cinema? Cool. Never, you've never seen that again. Or oh, I guess now we're getting to the 70s. They'll start being uh, TV reruns and stuff. Yeah, we start slowly getting into the era of uh, TV reruns. But yeah, just one of these weird things. We get a lot of time setting up the dojo stuff. Which again feels kind of like busy work. Like it almost is not... Almost feels like I don't know. Just just doesn't feel that necessary. Um. Oh yeah, sorry. I just remember this. There's a whole kind of basically Bob's uh, plot, trying to take over of some shit. Again, I I I got honestly, I got very lost. Let me. I did have this Japanese one, which is translated, so let me, I'll read from that, because this might be clearer. So, a man who makes the impossible possible, a master of karate and martial arts, a professional assassin, Takuma Tsuguri, uh, receives a request to kill. The man, uh, the murderer is a man who is held captive by the Metropolitan Police. And when Takuma infiltrates the police force, he blinds the smart detective, uh, Yagami, uh, and gives him a fatal blow to the man's vocal cords before escaping. Detective Yagami, who took responsibility for this incident, submitted his resignation, decided to confront uh, Takuma as a karate practitioner. Yagami visits Takuma's former dojo, Shobukan, uh, and hears from the director, Masako, that the person who hired Takuma is the same martial artist, Otoguru, uh, Otoguru the Lord of the Dragon and Tiger, is a person that the police have been keeping an eye on for being involved in inter international criminal organization. Yagami immediately proceeds with his own investigation uh, and approached uh, Otoguru uh, and Takuma. On the other hand, um, Masoko persuades Otoguru as a martial artist as well. Um, at that time, Takuma receives another request to kill him. That is, if uh, Masoko disappears, he will give a large amount of thanks. However, as Takuma refuses, a group of assassins stands in his way. Uh, which, yeah, we, we kind of, we have a group of assassins. We also have, like, what well, I think is supposed to be an Arabic, like, businessman, but it's, I mean, he's clearly a white guy. He's just white as fuck. You're like, yeah, we just have, like, a, a gang that's kind of there. And the comic relief is also kind of there. But the one of the guys who puts them on the path is supposedly happy. I think it, I can't remember. If, it, no, it's, it's a different character. 
that's the same character, sorry. Um, the guy posing as a hippie is actually like a mob boss. Honestly, I got... I really got lost in this film. And I don't think it's the alcohol. Yeah, we, we, for some reason we're at a ski resort at some point. Where Takuma fights a bunch of the kind of Power Rangers guys in geese. And it looks cold as fuck. And this is some cool fighting, but it almost feels like it just... Yeah, in that, that part in a, like a video game, like I feel like... Uh, I think it's like Uncharted 3 that's very good with this, where you just go into like a, a boat for a bit. And the boat, like whole set piece, is almost not in any way related to the story. It's just there because they needed... They already built the set piece and all that stuff. This, this is what this feels feels like a lot of times. Um, there's there's some really cool fighting again with uh, Takuma like fighting a bunch of people uh, in a sauna. Again, just feels like it feels like mad, mad fighting, which I, I'd, I'd love. But yeah, just a lot of scenes you're like, mm, okay, then think he's a, either about to or has sex with a woman um, who obviously tries to kill him uh, but don't worry he kills her first uh, and then white Ar um, white supposedly Arabic guy also jumps, jumps in but he also kills him um, not before the guy the murderer from the first film shows up uh To be like, hey, we should fight. We just settle our score. Um, which we get a long flashback, and they they do settle their score. Uh, but then I think someone else shows up. Sorry, I'm, I am watch also watching this again because it's just refreshing my mind. Because they they do settle the score. I can't remember. If to, does he kill him? Oh no, yeah no, uh, I forgot uh, Takuma's, he just gets injured and gets dragged away by a comic relief. Um, the actual uh, murderer, yeah, doesn't, doesn't go to check or just finish the job off. Um, I think that gets resolved later. There's just a whole bunch of utter craziness. Um, yeah, we kind of get like flashbacks of Takuma's childhood and father. Uh, and then he kind of like bits of mine and then goes fights the mob. Um, because honestly, this film, I got, I got lost. I really did. I'll admit it. I got fucking lost. Um, yeah, we finally, this is where we finally set up the score between Takuma and the murderer guy who I completely forget his name and then he just fights a whole bunch of fucking people um, again it feels like a end of a Yakuza game you just fight a whole bunch of people and somehow he comes out um, perfectly fine But uh, yeah, and they, oh yeah, they do like a little bit of a chase scene. Um, at the end, to chase the the mob boss, who I keep forgetting who he's played by. Um, but it doesn't matter, cause then it's the end of the film. And then it's two, yeah, cause he basically just ends up blowing up. And that's the end of the film. It's mad. It's utterly mad. I'll be honest. I yeah. I honestly just got lost in this film. Uh, I, I'm not afraid to admit it. I just got, I just got fucking lost. 
it's honestly i think the i think the story's worse in this one it's but some of the fighting is better there's lots of i think better fight scenes um that uh, yeah i honestly did get lost it's kind of infighting between like karate houses and the mafia it's weird it's 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 it's, it's just strange it's, honestly it's just it's just batshit it looks good the fighting's good Yes, the story is confusing as fuck. Uh, is what I'm gonna say. Confusing as fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna sign off here because uh, yeah, I don't think we, I need to say any much more. So I'm gonna say, live long and prosper, and hopefully I'll see you for next time for the Street Fighters Last Revenge. See you then. Bye for now.